Hi everyone. Hope you can see me and hear me. Uh, I'm not going to send a video all, all the time now. Um, right, quite a few people are confused about what's been going on this week. You should have been, as I posted in the assignment, so check the post and check the assignment for this week in our team. All right, you should have been um, going over the revision notes that we started in class. Okay, so I posted the revision notes. You should just be going through them and trying to answer the questions, even the ones that we've already done in class. You should be trying to do them yourself, all right? Now, this video or these next set of few videos um, is going to be me going through the answers, okay? So you can check whether what you've done is right. And that will be it for this week. And I'll post more work next week now because obviously you're not going to be back in school, okay? So I'm going to um, I'm gonna crack on with that, okay? So I'm just going to go through each one. All right, so percentages of numbers is the first set. All right, so I put the head in and the clip numbers if you want to check on my swatch as well. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too much detail because these first three should be simple. All right, so question A is 50% of 24. Yeah, we should know how to do 50%. 50% is divided by two. Yeah, half in it. So literally 50% of 24 is 24 divided by 2 or half of 24, whatever you want to call it. The answer is 12. Okay. For the next one, 25%. To work out 25%, you divide by 4, don't you? Or you half it twice. Yeah. So for question B, 24 divided by 4 is 6. Okay. Or that's the same as doing 12 divided by 2. Yeah. If 50%. Of 24 is 12, then 25 percent is six, and then I'll do see over here. All right, so for 75 percent, there's a couple of different ways that we've discussed in class before, if you remember. So we can either do 25 percent and take it away from 100, or we can do 25 percent and times it by three. Or the most common method is probably to do 50 percent first, write that down, then do 25 percent afterwards, and then add those together. Because if you add 50 and 25, you get 75. Okay, and we've already worked out in part A here, look, the 50% is 12. We've worked out in part B that 25% is 6. So when we add those together, we get 18. All right, so that's that for the first set. Moving on then, so for 10%, you should remember 10% is divided by 10. Because remember, percent means 8 of 100. So 10 divided by 10 is 10. Yeah, there are 10 tens in 100, so that's why you divide by 10. So for question D, 60 divided by 10 is 6. So 10% of 60 is 6. Right, for 5% then, you can either divide by 20, but most people tend to do 10% divided by 2. Okay, so for question E, we already know that 10% of 60 is 6, because we worked that out in part A, didn't we? So if 10% is 6, then 5% must be 3. And that's the answer for that one. And then it's pretty obvious for question F, and they're the same as um, how we just did adding 50 and 25 together. For 75, we can add 10 and 5% together for 50. Okay, so we've already worked out here again, look, in part A, this is 6, in part B, this is 3, so add those together, 15% would be 9. Okay, moving on, and then 30% we've done before, alright, so 3 lots of 10 would be the best way to do 30%, so do 10% first, which we already know is divided by 10, so 120 divided by 10 is 12. So you can either times that number by 3 now, or what some people prefer to do is write the same three numbers out, all right? So add them together. It doesn't really matter, okay? We're still going to get 30% as, as our answer, which is 36, okay? For 35%, three lots of 10. plus one five, or you could do a 20, a 10, and a five, or you could do 25 and 10. Loads of different ways of doing it, okay? So let's split it up, 10%, 10%, 10%, 5%, 10%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 
percent. Basically, any combination down here that's going to give you 35 will work. So 10 percent. Keep saying it. Let's divide by 10. So 80 divided by 10 is 8. That's 8 again. That's 8 again. That's 4. So 35 percent equals 8 plus 8 plus 8. So 3 eighths is 24, and then plus another 4, 28. So that's the answer there. And then for this one, 2 percent we would do two lots of 1%, okay? And remember, 1% is divided by 100 because there are 100 ones in 100, yeah? So do 1% first, add another 1% on, you get 2%, okay? So if 1% is divided by 100, 800 divided by 100 is 8, another 1% is another 8, 2% is 16. So we've got our three final answers there. And we can do any percentages, really, can't we? As long as we remember 50%, 10%, and 1%, we should be able to use a combination of those and find anything that we need to. Okay, moving on then, fraction of a quantity. So for this one, we needed to remember the rule, which was divide by the bottom, and then multiply by the top every time. Okay, so for part one, one third of 15, you do the big number divided by the bottom. Okay, it's just a times table, so 15 divided by three is five in there, because three times five is 15, and then times by the top, one times five is still five. Okay, and we discussed it in class before, when we're multiplying by one on the top, it doesn't change our answer. Okay, so one third of 15 is five. Then for part two, one seventh of 42, we took 42 divided by the bottom. Yeah, so 42 divided by seven, which is six, because six times seven is 42. Multiply by the top now, six times one still gives you six. Right? And then for part three, we've got three fifths of 60. So we do 60 divided by the bottom. So 60 divided by 5 is 12, because 12 times 5 is 60. And then we do 12 times by the top. So 12 times by 3 is 36. Okay? So this time it does make a difference, doesn't it, in terms of there being more than one on the top? Okay, because the answer is not 12. That would only be one fifth of 60. We want three fifths, so we times that number by three. <clears throat> so moving on, uh, and then we've done this one as well, uh, for those people that were in the last time we were in and we had a lesson, we did this as a starter, right? So this is like a more a, a worded type of question. I'm going to underline the stuff that's important. So there's 24 sweets left in the back, one quarter of them are red, three eighths of them are green, and the rest are yellow. And the question is asking how many yellow sweets are there? Okay, so we know how many sweets there are in total. We don't at the moment know how many of them are red and how many of them are green. So that's what we need to work out. We only know that one quarter of them are red. So we need to work out what that actually means, like how many sweets are red. Okay, so for red, we're doing one quarter, because that's what it tells us here, of 24, because that's how many are in the back. Okay, so this is what we've just done, isn't it? One quarter of 24 is 24 divided by 4, which is 6. 6 times by 1 is still 6. We do the same sort of thing for green then. So green says 3 eighths of them are green. It's 3 eighths of the 24 still. Okay, so we're doing 3 eighths of 24 equals. Right? So 3 eighths of 24 divided by the bottom times by the top, so 24 divided by 8 is 3, because 3 times 8 is 24, 3 times 3 is 9, so there are 9 green sweets. All right, and then it tells you here, look, the rest of them are yellow, so there's only red, green, and yellow sweets. We know how many red there are, we know how many green there are, and we know how many there are in total, so we now need to do um, 6 plus 9, which is 15, so that's the red and green together. And everything else left over is going to be yellow. So there's 24 in total. Take away the 50. So 
is 9. So there are 9 yellow sweets. Okay. Well, I'll finish this section off as well then, and then I'll have to do a separate video because it only records for a certain amount of time. Okay, so for this one, equivalent fractions, this is just remembering that um, one of the first rules we've learned about fractions, really, whatever you do at the bottom, you do the same to the top. And equivalent just means equal to, isn't it? So we're making two fractions that are called different numbers, but they're equal to each other, so they mean the same thing. Okay, so for this first one, the 10 has changed to 30, okay, by multiplying, okay, 10 goes into 30 three times in this, so we're multiplying by three. So if we're multiplying the bottom numbers by three, the denominators, we've got to do the same to the top numbers as well, the numerators. So three times three is nine. And I use this example in class as well. This means if I've got like a box of chocolates or something, and I give three tenths of the box to somebody in a class, and then I give nine thirtieths to somebody else in the class, they mean the same thing. They're worth the same amount. So that means they've had the same amount, okay? So they are exactly the same. The two people that I've given these to have had exactly the same amount. So this is another thing that is just all linked to your times tables. All right, so the next one, five has changed into 20. Okay, five goes into 24 times. Five times four is 20, isn't it? So if we times by four on the bottom, we do the same on the top. So three fifths is equal to 12 20 -ths. And the same thing for the last one then. Okay, four times by something is 28, which is seven. Okay. Well, we're in 27 times, so we're times in the bottom by seven. We do exactly the same on the top. Okay, okay so simplifying fractions. So I write the following fractions in the simplest form. Remember, simplify just means to make them easier than this. So divide the top and bottom by the same number until you've made them as small as possible. Right, and we might do this in one step, we might be able to do this, uh, it might take two or three steps, but as long as we all get the same final answer. All right, if you want to do it in one step, you're looking for the biggest number that is a factor of the top and the bottom, so the biggest number you can divide both of them by. Okay, so if we were doing 12 over 16, all right, the biggest number we could divide by straight away would be 4. If you didn't spot that it was 4, they're both even numbers, so you could divide by 2, but new, but then you'd have to divide by 2 again. So I'm going to divide by 4. All right, divide by 4, top and bottom. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. The answer is 3 over 4. You can't simplify this anymore because the only numbers that go into 3 and 4 are 1. And if we divide by 1, we get the same answer. Okay, so question B, 6 over 15. All right, it has to be the same number, doesn't it? So you can't divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 3 because that won't work. Okay, so we should be for this one spot in that it's the number three we should divide by because six and 15 are both in the three times table yeah so divide by three give you two over five you can't simplify anymore and then for question c this is uh, numbers are slightly bigger so there's usually more factors so most people would spot straight away you can divide by 10 all right you can divide by five you can divide by four you can divide by um, 20 you can divide by two Blah, blah, blah. The best thing to do is try and pick the biggest number possible, which in this case would be 20. Okay, 20 goes into 20, 20 goes into 60. So that's one over three. All right, I'll just redo this one over here just to show you because most people would have divided by 10 instead. So if you divide by 10, you get two over six. And if they get one over three, then you would divide by two. Over three. So we still get the same answer, even if it takes two steps or whatever it takes one step. Okay, adding and subtracting. Now the first two, so A and B are fairly straightforward. So remember to add or subtract fractions, the denominators, so the bottom numbers, must, oh, it's not must, but they must be the same. Okay. So you can't add or subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. So if they are the same like they are in A and B, okay, also remember you don't ever add or subtract the denominators once they're the same, they'll stay the same. So I use this example in class, okay, if I was doing 2 elevenths plus 5 elevenths, the answer would just be 7 over 11, okay, 2 plus 5 is 7 and the 11 stays the same. So the example I used in class was if I've got a 
pizza and I cut it up into seven, uh, 11 slices, sorry. Um, if I eat two slices out of those 11, and then I eat another five slices afterwards, then that means I've, I've eaten seven slices out of 11. Yeah, I, I haven't had seven out of 22, right? So you never add these bottom numbers together. You just add the top numbers, okay? So for question B then, it's three over 10, take away one over 10, which would give you two over 10. Okay, the bottoms are already the same. But then thinking back to section four, just now we're simplifying. You can simplify this one, so that's the answer. But this one, you should notice, they're both even numbers. Okay, so you can divide by two, top or bottom. So your final answer for that one would be one over five. Okay, they're pretty easy. Question C then is slightly a little bit harder. Um, you should notice this time the bottom numbers are not the same. But that's no big deal, we just make them the same instead. So we go back to section three, equivalent fractions. We're going to make these fractions equivalent and make the denominators the same. All right. So what I would always suggest that you do is look at the two bottom numbers, find out which one is the biggest and see if the smallest one goes into it. So eight is clearly the biggest denominator. Okay. Four does go into eight. So we should make both of the denominators into eight. Okay. And then just look at each fraction separately. So this first fraction here, 5 over 8, okay, it was already 8 on the bottom, so we haven't changed anything in the fraction at all, so we don't change the top, okay? Then if we look at this fraction, okay, it was 1 over 4, and now it needs to be something over 8. It's not going to be 1 over 8, okay, because 1 over 4 and 1 over 8 are not the same thing. So if we look at the denominator, the number 4, we've changed that into a number 8 by multiplying, okay? Yeah? And four multiplied by two gives you eight, isn't it? So that means we're times in this fraction by two. So if we times the bottom of the fraction by two to get eight, then we have to times the top of the fraction by two as well to get two, okay? So whatever you multiply the bottom by to make it into eight, you've got to multiply the top by the same number. Then we can just do what we did in A and B. So if I take away two is three, and the eight stays the same, can't simplify. So the answer is three over eight. Okay, moving on. So similar with question D now. All right, we've got one over four plus five over 12. So the bottom numbers are not the same, but look at the bottom numbers, four does go into 12. So let's make both of them into 12. Okay, so same as before, look at each fraction separately. So this fraction to start with, it was a four on the bottom and we've changed it into a 12. So the bottom number has changed, meaning the top number has to change as well. Okay, so four goes into 12 three times. So we're times in the top and bottom of this fraction by three. So four times three gave us a 12. One times by three will give us three. Okay, so one over four is equivalent to three over 12. In this one then, it hasn't changed, has it? It was already a 12 on the bottom. It's still a 12 on the bottom. So the top doesn't change. Okay, so we get 3 over 12 plus 5 over 12, which equals 8 over 12. Okay, remember, we're just adding the top numbers, not the denominators. Then 8 over 12 can be simplified. So you can divide both of them by 4. So that would give you 2 over 3. Okay. But E and F then are slightly harder only because um, you can't just do it by multiplying one fraction. So if you look at question E, 5 is the biggest denominator, but 3 does not go into 5, does it? So we can't do that. So this time we have to change both of the denominators. Okay, so we need to think of the smallest number that is in the 3 times table, but is also in the 5 times table. Okay, if you can't have any 3s and can't have any 5s. The first number you should spot there in both is 15. Okay, so 15 is a common denominator. So that's what we put on the bottom. All right, and then look at each fraction separately. So this fraction here, one over three, we've times the three by something to make it 15. Okay, so if you count the being threes until you get to 15, that's five, isn't it? So you're times in this fraction by five top and bottom in there. We times the three by five to make 15. So we times one by five to make five. So one over three is equivalent to five over 15. Then we look at this one, All right? So there was a five on the bottom and we've made it to 15. So that means we've times it by three because five times three is 15. 
So if we're times in the denominator by three, we've got a times a numerator by three as well, the top number. So two times three is six. All right, now the bottoms are the same. We can just add them up. So five plus six is 11. And the 15 stays the same. You can't simplify. Okay, so that was our final answer for the first one. That's our final answer for the second one. And then for question F, okay, we've got, um, I'll rewrite it again. So 7 over 10 minus 1 over 4. Okay, so the denominators are not the same. 4 doesn't go into 10, so we need to think of another number. So if we count up in our 10s and count up in our 4s, the first number that we should come to the symbol is the number 20. Okay, so the denominator is 20 on both of them. So for this one here, look, it was 10, we've changed it to 20. We've times it by 2 of them because 10 goes into 20 twice. So we times the top by 2 as well. 7 times 2 is 40. This one, the bottom was 4. We've changed it to 20, yeah, which is times by 5. So we times the top by 5 as well. 1 times 5 is 5. Then once the bottoms are the same, they stay the same, and we just add or subtract the top. This time it's subtract. Yeah, so 14 take away 5 is 9. You can't simplify the answers 9 over 20, job done. Next. Okay, multiplying fractions then. This is where we just need to remember not to overcomplicate it. We don't need to make the bottom numbers the same when we multiply, okay? When we multiply, we just need to remember to times the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom. Or numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. That's it, okay? Then just try and simplify if we can. So for question A, times the two top numbers together. So we'll do two times five on the top, three times eight on the bottom. Okay, two times five is 10, obviously. Three times eight is 24. Don't leave your answer like that then, okay? Because it tells you to simplify and we should know to simplify anyway. So they're both even numbers, you can half them. Okay, so five over 12 is the simplified answer. So same thing for question B now, times the top two together, so it'll be one times three on the top, four times five on the bottom, one times three is three, four times five is 20, can simplify, that's where it says we are possible, so don't waste time trying to simplify every single one. And then question C, okay, remember, this question is slightly different because this is not two fractions together, is it? So we're not actually multiplying two fractions here at the moment. That's a whole number or an integer times by a fraction. Okay, so don't forget with this one to change the three into a fraction. So to change any whole number into a fraction, we just put a one on the bottom. So three is the same as three over one. Okay, so if you rewrite this now, it should be three over one times by two over seven. And then we can do what we've done with, with the others. So we times the top two together, three times two. We times the bottom two together, one times seven. We get six over seven. And that's it. So I should have enough time on this video just for um, the next section as well. So dividing fractions, this is where we need to remember the rule. Keep change, flip, okay? So that means for question A, we keep the first fraction the same. The change means we change the symbol from divide to times, and the flip means we flip the second fraction over. And now this is the same as section six that we just did. Yeah, we times the top two together, we times the bottom two together, we write the answer. So that's six over four. Okay, which simplifies to three over two, which is one and one half, if you write it as a mixed number, but we'll come on to that on the next little section anyway. Okay. So question B then, I'm gonna net the room a little bit, but keep change flip. So three over eight times by 11 over two, we keep the first one the same, we change the sign to times, we flip the fraction over, and we do three times 11, Eight times two, so three elevens is thirty-three. Two eights is sixteen. You can't simplify. You can do a mixed number, 
So how many whole 16s go into 33 is 2. And there's 1 over 16 left over. Okay. And then question C, same as before. This is not a fraction at the moment, so we make it a fraction. So it's 7 over 1 divided by 5 over 6. Then we do keep change flip. So 7 over 1 times by 6 over 5. So remember, keep the first fraction the same. Change the divide to times, flip the second fraction over. And we do our multiplying. So 7, 6 is 42. 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, as a mixed number, 5 goes into 42 8 times. 2, so you have 2 over 5 left over. Okay, so we have 1 and 1 half there, 2 and 1 sixteenths there, and 8 and 2 fifths there. All right, I'll stop this one there. So this one, we need to convert um, these into mixed numbers. So at the moment, they're improper fractions, okay? So they're fractions where the top is bigger than the bottom. So the way we convert them is, remember, like we start with this one, obviously, 9 over 2, that means 9 divided by 2. Yeah, the fraction line means divide. So when we write a mixed number, it's always going to be a whole number and then a fraction as a remainder. Okay, so to work that out, we just need to see how many whole twos go into 9. Okay, so if you count it up in your two times table, the closest you will get to nine without going above it would be eight, wouldn't it? Okay, which is four times two. So four will be the big number. We're talking about twos then, so the remainder is something eight of two, and our remainder is one, isn't it? Because four times two gives you eight. We wanted nine, so we need one more. Okay, so it's how many whole times the bottom goes into the top, and then write the remainder as your fraction. So for question two, 17 over 3 is how many whole threes go into 17, write your remainder as a fraction. Okay, so if you think of your three times table, the closest you'll get to 17 without going above it would be 15, wouldn't it, which is 5 times 3. So we've got 5 lots of 3. 5 times 3 is only 15, though. No, we want 17. So there's 2 as a remainder. And then the last one, 67 over 12. Counting up in your 12s this time, so think of your 12 times table, the closest you would get to 67 going up in your 12s without going above it would be 60. And the 12 goes into 65 times. Okay, we're talking about 12s then, so the remainder is like a 12. And then 5 times 12 is 60, and we wanted 67, that's a remainder of 7 left over. Okay, so 4.5 for the first one, 5 and 2 thirds for the second, and 5 and 7 twelfths for the third. Now, the other way around now, convert into improper fractions, okay? So we're starting with mixed numbers this time. So I'm going to rewrite them this time, all right? So we got three and four fifths. Straight away, okay, the denominator of the fraction is going to stay the same. So all we're really working out is the numerator. And the way that we do that is, okay, if we're talking about fifths, which we are in this case, all right, the big three means we've got three whole sets of five already. Okay, so we do 3 times by 5, because we've got 3 whole sets of 5, plus an extra 4. Okay, so we do 3 times by 5, which is 15, plus 4, which is 19. Okay, and it's always the same. You times the big number by the denominator, and then add on the numerator. So 3 times by 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19. Okay, so for question 2, 5 and 1 eighths. 5 and 1 over 8, I'll write it out again. We're talking about 8s, so 8 is the denominator. And then the big number 5 means we've already got 5 whole sets of 8. Okay, so we do 5 times by 8, which is 40, and we've got one more 8 to add on afterwards, so that would be 41. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 1 is 41. And then part 3, same sort of thing, we'll have 9 and 10 over 11. So we're talking about 11, so that stays on the bottom. So the big number 9 means we've got 9 whole sets of 11 already, and then we're adding an extra 10 11 on. Okay, so 9 times by 11 is 99, plus 10 is 109. Okay, so that's 109 over 11. Moving on, I think this is the last uh, section now. Eh? So, um, convert it between fractions, decimals, and percentages. So this says convert the following percentages into decimals and fractions. Okay, 
So the first thing we need to understand is to change a percentage into a decimal. All you do is divide it by 100, okay? And then we'll discuss a separate method for percentages into fractions, okay? Percentages into fractions, that is when we make the denominator over 100, okay? Because percent means eight of 100 in there, so it's gonna be something, I'll just put question mark, something over 100. It makes sense when we go through them. Okay, so for question one, all right, 13%, so, 13 divided by 100 is 0.13. So 13% as a decimal is 0.13. That's the first answer. Now 13% as a fraction, remember we discussed earlier on, um, percent means eight of 100. So 13% means 13 eight of 100. Okay, so that is your answer as a decimal. That's your answer as a fraction. We can't simplify that fraction, so that's just the answer, okay? So similar thing for question two then, 76% to change it into a decimal is divided by 100. So 76 divided by 100 is 0.76. That's your answer as a decimal. Then 76% as a fraction means 76 over 100. But this time we can simplify. They're both even for a start, okay? So if we half both of them, half of 100 is 50, and half of 76, if you're unsure, I will do the bus stop method, so 76 divided by 2, or break the numbers up to half of 70, which is 35, half of 6, which is 3, 35 plus 3, 38. You should notice from there, then we can go again, because okay? they're still both even numbers, aren't they? So let's half them again, half of 50 is 25. We'll do the same thing for 38 if you need to, half of 30 and half of 8. So half of 30 is 15. Half of eight is four, 15 plus four is 19. And that's your answer there. Okay. Then last one, I'll fit it in here. Nine percent is a decimal, nine divided by 100, 0 0.09. Make sure it's 0 0.09, not 0 0.9. Nine percent is a fraction, nine over 100. Okay, so there's your decimal. Is your fraction. So sometimes the fractions can be simplified, sometimes they can't. We move on. So this time it says convert the, convert the following decimals into percentages and fractions. So decimal to percentage is times by 100, the opposite of what we've just done. Okay, so for part one here, 0 0.3 as a percentage is 0 0.3 times by 100, which is 30%. Okay, and what we'll do then to write them as, as fractions is we'll do eight of 100 again. So something eight of 100, because we know the answer is 30% there. So 30% as a fraction, 30 over 100, which you can simplify to three over 10. Okay, part two, same thing, 0.99, first of all, into a percentage is times 100, so 0.99, times 100 is 99 percent and percentage into a fraction is just over 100 so 99 percent is 99 over 100 okay so we've got our two answers there and then the next one 0 0.02 as a percentage would be times it by 100 that's two percent okay two percent as a fraction 2 over 100, which simplifies to 1 over 50 because you can half them both. So there's your percentage, there's your fraction. And the more practice you get with this, you'll be able to do lots of these um, fairly quickly. Okay, and last section then, fraction to percentage. So we're still going to think of the method that it's going to be something over 100. And then we already know percentage to decimal. I should say divide, sorry. Percentage to decimal divide by 100. Okay, so part one, three over 10. If we want to change this into a percentage, the easiest thing to do is to make the bottom number 100 because we've already discussed the percent means eight of 100, isn't it? So 
this is where equivalent fractions comes in again now. So the 10 is being changed to 100 by multiplying by 10. So if we multiply the bottom by 10, we have to do the top by 10 as well. And then 30 over 100 is 30%. Okay. We also need that as a decimal. We've already done it already. Percentage to decimal is divided by 100. So 30 divided by 100 is 0 0.3. So you've got a percentage and you've got a decimal. So question two, seven over 20, we still want to make it out of 100. So we'll do an equivalent fraction. So 20 goes into 100 five times, so we're times in by five, which means we have to times the top by five as well, which would be 35. 35 out of 100 is 35 percent. Okay, 35% of the decimal is 35 divided by 100, which is 0 0.35. All right, and I'll just fit the last one over here. So question 3, 29 over 50. We want to make it out of 100. That's by times and by 2. So we times the top by 2 as well. And if you're unsure, just work it out separately. 20 times by 2 is 40. 9 times by 2 is 18, 40 plus 18 is 58, 58 times 100 is 58%, okay, 58% is a decimal, 58 divided by 100 is 0 0.58, okay, and I think that's the end of that then, yeah, okay, so that's the end of the notes, um, so yeah, the notes that you've been doing at home, the revision that you've done, have a watch of these videos just to double check your answers um, and see see how you've got on really, see if there's any topics that you probably, uh, you may need to revise again in a little bit more detail, but they're the answers. Um, hope you find them easy to follow and yeah, that's it from me. Take care, see you soon.